Hey everyone, and welcome to this first look at the Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer. Monoprice sent me a pre-production prototype of the new Mini Delta 3D printer a few months ago to help test and evaluate the design. The first batch of production models were recently sold as part of a very successful Indiegogo campaign for the incredibly low price point of $169. This video is a brief introduction and review of the Mini Delta, and in it I will explain why I believe this printer is a game-changing design. Before we dive into the in-depth review of the Mini Delta, I need to stress that this is a pre-production prototype printer, and so there may be some differences in the finished product. Please keep in mind as you watch that this video features a hand assembled prototype. Also, this printer should appeal to both novices and experts alike, so I will try to keep the video review informative for both groups. I will show a basic unboxing, printing demonstration, print quality evaluation, and my impressions after using this printer in my shop for several months. Let's get right to it. Here's the box, and it's surprisingly light. It certainly doesn't feel like there's a 3D printer inside. The box is quite similar to the packaging that the popular Monoprice Select Mini is shipped in, which is logical when you consider that these two printers come from the same hardware manufacturer. It's a double-sided cardboard box package with a styrofoam insert to protect the printer. A small box inside contains the power supply and cord, as well as a spool holder, SD card, and a plastic spatula for removing prints from the print bed. Overall, the packaging looks like it should protect the printer well during shipping. Setting up the printer is very simple, since the printer comes fully assembled. You shouldn't even need instructions to get things ready to print. First, you make sure the packaging materials are all removed. Then plug the power supply brick in. Hook the spool holder in position on the back of the printer and the printer is ready to go. You will notice that the Mini Delta is made from black anodized aluminum extrusions making it quite rugged but also sharp and professional looking. It is totally self-contained except for the power supply. It even has a carrying handle on the top that makes it easy to transport. It's small and unobtrusive, taking up a very small footprint. Of course, this means that the print volume is quite small also, but honestly, the 120mm tall by 120mm diameter volume is large enough for the average user. Even if you think you need a larger printer, you should still take a look at the Mini Delta, because once you have one, you will realize that it's the right printer for certain tasks. Much like a coping saw is best for certain jobs, and a ripping saw is best for others. Printing is done on a stationary circular heated bed which is covered in a plastic build surface that promotes adhesion while the part is printing. The side of the printer has the power input, micro USB jack, a micro SD card slot, and a multicolor illuminated button for special software functions such as starting an automated print job. The front of the printer is where you will find the main controls and color LCD display for the printer. This is where you will be interacting with the printer the most. You navigate the menus with the upper and lower buttons, and the center button is used to make selections on the bright, colorful user interface. The Mini Delta can print tethered to a computer with USB or Wi-Fi, but I prefer to print standalone with the SD card. To start a print, you will need an object model. You can create your own models using CAD software, or download them from a model sharing site like Thingiverse. Once you have a model, you need to convert it to a format which the printer understands with a slicing program. There are numerous free or purchased slicing programs available for you to choose from. I've been using a free program called Cura for my slicer, but everyone has their favorite. The slicing program is where you will set up the parameters that tell the printer with the resolution and speed which you want to print the object at, which will affect the quality and appearance of the finished part. The slicing program will convert the model file into a G-code file that the printer uses to print the object. 
to print the file in standalone mode, you will transfer the file to the SD card and then load that into the Mini Delta. From there, you can start the print. At this point, with most other low-cost 3D printers, you would be required to go through an elaborate process of adjusting and calibrating the printing bed level to get it aligned with the print nozzle. The Mini Delta does away with all that because it employs automatic bed leveling using some clever math and some limit switches under the bed. The Mini Delta can do in seconds what would normally take several minutes to painstakingly do by hand. From this point onward, the printer will read the information in the G-code file and create the finished part, which you can then pop off the bed once it cools. So what kind of print quality can you expect from a fully assembled 3D printer that costs less than $170? I was not expecting much, but I was blown away by the quality of the prints. My prototype produces quality on par with printers costing several times the price at the common layer resolution of 200 microns. However, the Mini Delta really excels with the print layer resolution of 100 microns and even more so at 50 microns. The Mini Delta is obviously capable of a lot more than the spec sheet calls out. Just look at these print samples. Speaking of the spec sheet, there's a lot of talk about printing at 150 millimeters per second with this printer. And there's a lot of assumptions made about printer speed specifications. You should think of maximum print speed like the top speed advertised for an automobile. When racing that car on a track, you must brake for corners and accelerate on the straightaways. Depending on the track, you may not have a straightaway long enough to ever reach the top speed of the car before reaching another corner. The same is true for the maximum speed of a 3D printer, which has to accelerate, brake, and turn as it prints. In other words, you're never going to print at full speed for a whole print, because you still have to slow down for turns, just like a car. In any case, a Delta-style printer has an advantage over other styles of printers, because it is designed to have low moving mass, so it can accelerate, decelerate, and turn quicker than a printer with a larger moving mass. If you try and run the same speed with a more massive printer, the print quality can suffer. The takeaway from this is that you will rarely reach the 150 mm per second speed with this printer depending on your print settings and your model. However, if you print on the Mini Delta as fast as possible, the print quality will be superior to other types of printers that are trying to keep up at their top speed.
To conclude this first look, I can say that the Monoprice Mini Delta is a game-changing printer. No other printer in this price range produces such high-quality output and offers the same combination of features, including automatic bed leveling and a heated bed. Those are usually additional cost options on competing printers. After using this printer for just a few months, it is my new favorite printer. I like it so much I ordered one of the first production models on Indiegogo. The print quality still amazes me, and I never get tired of experimenting with different models on the printer. I don't know exactly how long the printer has been used before I got it, but I've used it daily in the months that I've had it and I've never had anything break or fail. The printer has been totally trouble free the whole time, which is something important to consider if you're new to 3D printing. I've never even had so much as a filament jam with this printer. It's been rock solid and very frustration free. There is only one complaint that I have about the printer, and that is that this printer, being essentially formed from hollow boxes, is a bit noisy. The printing sound seems to resonate inside. This really does not bother me that much, but it may be important to you. There are some easy ways to dampen the sound, which I will cover in the future. The Monoprice Mini Delta is obviously targeted as an entry-level 3D printer, and it is an excellent choice for this because of the low price point, stylish design, rich features, and ease of use. But the rugged durability and amazing print quality make it an excellent workhorse for even the most experienced power user, especially for highly detailed prints. This is a truly revolutionary printer and it sets a new benchmark for price and performance. That's it for this first look at the Monoprice Mini Delta. Please like and share this video if you found it informative and let me know in the comments below if you have any specific questions about the printer that I didn't answer in the video. If you're new to this channel and you enjoy 3D printing, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to receive notifications. We would love to have you along to give us input and feedback as we use the Mini Delta and other 3D printers to develop and conduct our water rocket and multi-rotor experiments. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.